good afternoon. It's officially like five minutes past noon. I hope you'll forgive me. I decided to sleep in a little today because, um, well, I've been getting up kind of early, like way early. That's why there was no room casting Wednesday yesterday. However, the runes are included in today's reading, and I will be doing a makeup rune of the week video. Uh, those shorts on High Notes and YouTube go up before the main reading, so you'll see most times it's kind of a, a little appetizer, a little something to just kind of give you an idea of what it is you're looking at. And if you want the full details, this is where you come. So, welcome one and all. I appreciate you for being here. We are on the day of Thor, and... It's traditional Thursday, so we do this just like I did when I first started out. Same kind of layout. Sort of like a couple cards here, a card there, three cards everywhere else. So I've got Viking Oracle, I've got Spirit Animal Oracle, I have Rider Weight Tarot, Shaman's Dream, and the Runes. And I do have a new Shaman's Oracle. I picked that up when I went to uh, went to the shop the other day. I don't know if uh, any of you heard about this, but the Herkimer Diamond, uh, that little crystal that was paired with my Moldavite, suddenly vanished. We have no idea where it went. So I'm looking to have the Herkimer Diamond set by itself and just wear that around my neck because uh, well, I went a couple days wearing it and I felt fine. So looks like the training wheels are off. That's just kind of how I took it. Anyway. Just laying out your cards. Also, good news. Yes, even though the schedule has changed and made uh, video posting a little sporadic. Guess what? Saturdays are all mine, baby. So yes, we'll still be doing those Saturday mor those uh, Saturday morning streams and Saturday morning tea with Raven will be a thing. And yes, you can come along and you can. Sit down and chat with me, have a cup of tea and all that good stuff, and we'll just talk about whatever. We'll talk about tabletop RPGs, we'll talk tarot, we'll talk just whatever you want to talk about. And if you want to become part of the live stream, yes, I can uh, send you a link, and that will bring you right into the stream, no problem. It's an open format kind of thing, so we can talk about whatever you'd like. Also, the um, the regular the other videos that I make, um, I'm going to have to plan those out a little better because, quite honestly, I only have one other day off at some time during the week, and I'm really not entirely clear over whether that's Wednesdays or Tuesdays yet. So everything's a little up in the air, and my week has been broken into like three and four day. Uh, three and four day stretches so doesn't seem like I'm going to be doing any more zombie marches at least for a little while also I will be working on Thanksgiving uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's I uh, will probably be working the early morning shifts so there won't be any readings for those but I have opted out for Christmas so we'll see how that goes okay So, let's not, let's not uh, dawdle any further. Let's see what's going on. Starting with us, again, the halls. Part of me wants to say bullshit to this card. <laughs> because what it's telling us is that our sacrifices are going to yield greater rewards. And uh, personally right now, that's not a card that's really resonating with me. But then again, I have to see where the what the rest of the cards are. With this one though, we're just referring to today. And we know Thor standing between uh, Thor standing in, in his hall right now. But there are two that are primarily big rewards. We know Sesramnir, we know Valhall, and those are for the people who died 
in battle, and I usually hear this from the newbies, oh, that's where I want to go, I want to go to Valhalla, and I'm like, you're about to live a very, very violent lifestyle, buddy. I don't think that's... Uh, <laughs> you might want to really, really think about that one, just in case, uh, before you adopt that kind of a stance. But there's also a little bit of a word of caution in there. Sometimes the sacrifices you make don't pay off in the way you think they will. So you really have to weigh your options. Just remember that. Because of those who die in battle, you have a field full of people who died in battle. It's Freya who gets the first pick. She takes off with them to Sessonir. And Odin gets whatever's left. He gets the last half. So... While you're aiming at one thing, your destiny could very well be something else. Just keep that in mind. And we are not being guided today. This is a very hands-off approach. And of course it lines up right with the halls. Because now the choices are choices we're going to have to make. Remember, even though all of this can give a warning, all of this can tell you of a possible great outcome you still have agency in this this doesn't this is not fate it's not set in stone it's nothing like that this is just to give you insights give you what you kind of need to know kind of a little bit of need to know before you really start your day what we're looking to in nature though is a starfish so we're again opening to infinite possibility remember your goals may be one thing but uh what is the old saying? The gods laugh at our plans. The best laid plans of both mice and men. Right? Going into the tarot, we have an ace of wands. We have temperance in reverse. And we have tower. Too often, we get these, uh, we get these creative opportunities. Brand new ideas. Brand new inspiration. And we really want to go for it. But we don't really understand exactly where it's going. We often, we often make a lot of the wrong choices. We overindulge in things and it ultimately leads us to this, that tower moment. Where things go a little catastrophic. They go sideways on us. But what we're left with is that foundation. You always have to remember your foundation and keep it in mind. Because the foundation is solid. And if it's solid, whatever you build on it will stand very well. Unless it has flaws somewhere. And the choices you make are what's building. But try not to get too hung up. We're opening to infinite possibilities, but we're also... Remember, uh, we learn lessons from failure. Failure has to be part of the equation. Without it, we could very well be setting ourselves up for even more failure later. Because if you fail to plan, or if you, if you, sorry, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. But the thing is, do you learn anything from it? It can't be regret without learning anything from it. And we saw that with the last reading on Tuesday. What, what lessons do we take from failure? So, let's have a look at the uh, shaman's dream. Let's have a look at our dreams and see what's going on. Okay. Well, that, if this isn't a clear message, I don't know what is. You've got the hollow bone. And the hollow bone is all about teachability. Are you teachable? Can you learn things? If so... From the Woodwives, how adaptable are you? Teachability and adaptability go a long way. They really do. They keep these tower moments from happening. They do teach temperance. They take those ideas and they discipline them. But here's the thing. The Farther Gate talks about a bold step forward. So taking that bold step is going to be the absolute key moment. This is not where you fly off the handle. 
this is where you take a step in the right direction. Now, what direction is that for you? Is it a long-term goal that you're looking at? Because right now, your goals, your goals are very much, even though you're, like I said, you're pointing in one direction, but you could really go anywhere. Are you open to that? Are you open to things not quite turning out the way you'd hoped? Because right now we have Barcano, we have Ingus, and we have Fehu. So teachability, adaptability, moving with those things, they make you ultimately grow. And we know birch trees are very, are pretty strong trees. They grow very well. How do you grow? How do you adapt? Because remember, the birch tree has to stand all kinds of inclement weather. Heat, extreme heat, extreme cold, wet, dry, the whole thing. It has to be able to bend, has to be a little flexible, or else it will break. But it also has to be strong. And you can't be strong if you're divided. Now I'm addressing you in a much larger sense because this is your relationship to the world around you. Can you combine your efforts with the efforts of others? And those efforts will become stronger. Again, if you can't do it on your own, that's fine. It's fine to ask for help because when help comes, it strengthens your resolve. It strengthens your morale. It does a lot for you. You don't have to sit there and fight that battle alone. That's the big thing. And what does it end up bringing? Fehu. Now, wealth is not necessarily about money. As I've stated before, it could be a wealth of knowledge. It could be a wealth of friends. It could be a wealth of lessons learned to help you take that big, bold step forward. And right now, the gods, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, is taking a big step back and saying, I think you've got this. Go for it. Do your thing. Where do you start? You start at A. You start at 1. You start at 0. You start here. And it doesn't seem like much at first, but everyone has to start somewhere. What better place than here? And what better time than now? So tomorrow will be Full Scale Friday. We're going to get an even bigger reading. And we're going to see where it goes. In the meantime, I hope this resonated with you. I thank you for joining me. Just remember that if no one else backs you, I do. I love you all. I want you to take care of yourselves and each other. It's the only way we grow stronger. Always be ready to help lift someone up rather than tearing others down. Always do what lights you up, and as always, shine on. Thank you.